quite useless. My influence over your mind is flawless. One of the most important story arcs featuring Jean Grey is the Phoenix Saga, where she is possessed by a powerful unknown entity, the Phoenix. This narrative has been pursued in the comics and also in the original X-Men animated series from the 90s, but X-Men 97 offers an interesting twist to the same, while fans are wondering if it is Madeline Pryor who underwent the whole Phoenix Saga in X-Men 97, or if it was the original Jean Grey, we thought it might be a good time to refresh your memories of what happened in the 90s series. In this video, we will explore who became the Phoenix in X-Men the Animated Series, Jean Grey or Madeline Pryor. Before we go into explanation, we have a very small request. If you like our content, please support us by subscribing to our channel. This is a small click for you, but for us, it means a lot. Thank you and let's begin. What happened during the events of the Phoenix Saga in X-Men The Animated Series? The third season of the 90s animated series explored the Phoenix Saga storyline in five episodes, from the third to the seventh. It all starts with Charles Xavier having a disturbing dream of a terrible war in space. He hears the cries for help from a woman, and she also warns him that it is for the sake of the future. Xavier wakes up with a feeling that something bad is about to happen, and he decides to send the X-Men to the Eagle One space station and the Star Core space shuttle. He isn't completely sure about the X-Men's plan of action in the space station, but Xavier believes that Dr. Peter Corbeau and his crew will die up there without their interference. Rogue is on another mission and Professor Xavier asks Storm to stay back on Earth while all the other X-Men fly off to the space station in the space shuttle. When they reached it, they are led into a trap by Eric the Red who works for the Shi'ar Empire and its leader, Dakin, who gets orders to take down the X-Men. And we also get to know their original plan which is to shoot down Lilandra, an enemy of the Shi'ar Empire. With a little help from Jean Grey, the X-Men are about to survive the attack but the space shuttle is badly damaged. Jean absorbs the knowledge of Dr. Corbeau and flies the shuttle through a lot of radiation, which makes her experience excruciating pain. She manages to pilot the shuttle to Earth, but after it lands in the river, the X-Men are shocked to find that Jean Grey has flown into the air covered by a glowing energy, and she exclaims, I am the Phoenix. She then falls unconscious with no memory of what just happened. She is hospitalized till they can find an explanation for her condition. Meanwhile, an astral form of Professor Xavier is created after he is hit by an energy beam from space and this astral Xavier causes a lot of trouble for the X-Men. He targets Logan and then goes after Gambit and Jubilee and this astral form is way too powerful for them. After the situation is contained, the real Xavier heads off to Weir Island because his lack of control over his subconscious cannot be trusted. Back in the island, Professor Xavier is contacted by Lilandra who turns out to be the sister of the ruler Dakin. She stopped being faithful to her brother after learning about his evil ambitions of control controlling the universe by using the Macron crystal. She stole the crystal and fled, but her brother's forces continued to pursue her. Meanwhile, Jean Grey's Phoenix powers start resurfacing once again, and the remaining X-Men decide to go back to Mir Island to find answers. Lilandra had been kidnapped for Eric the Red, and she asks for Professor Xavier's help telepathically. After a violent confrontation with the likes of Juggernaut, Black Tom, and Eric the Red and his men, the X-Men, they are finally powerless in the front of the Gladiator, a warrior from the Shi'ar Empire. When Professor Xavier sends a telepathic message for the X-Men to save Lilandra, it is picked up by Jean Grey who flies out in her Phoenix avatar. We get to see just how powerful Phoenix is when Gladiator is helpless in front of her. As it turns out, she is the child of the Macron Crystal, which is the source of her incredible powers. After taking down the Gladiator, the Phoenix senses the presence of Dakin, who has come after the Crystal. The Phoenix attempts to take the X-Men and Lilandra to the Shi'ar Empire, but they are attacked by space pirates named Starjammers. They too are after the crystal and they manage to get away with the Macron crystal. There's also the surprise information for the viewers about Corsair, a leader of the Starjammers, being Cyclops' father. He plans to kill the evil Dakin with the help of Cyclops and the Emperor has similar plans for them. Finally, when Dakin gets his hands on the crystal and uses its power to try and kill Corsair and the X-Men, the Phoenix uses an energy shield to protect him. The Phoenix then fights the mighty Dakin 
Jack and powered by the crystal. It is revealed that Jean Grey was chosen as the host of the Phoenix because of her telepathic powers. Now the Phoenix tries to make one last attempt to stop the crystal before it destroys the universe. She manages to trap Dakin inside the crystal and seals it. However, she also needs to make sure that the crystal never falls into the wrong hands again. As a final measure, she decides to take it into the heart of the sun and bids Cyclops goodbye as she heads out. It is what I must do. The Dark Phoenix events. Jean Grey and her tryst with the Phoenix Force continue later in the third season when we see signs of Jean losing control over her body. Professor X and Emma Frost fight for this psychic control of Jean and she continues to give in to her evil sensations. The Dark Phoenix goes on a rampage and even vows to destroy the X-Men who are no match for her powers. Lilandra from Shi'ar declares that the Dark Phoenix must die and finally a trial of combat determines the faith of Jean Grey as the X-Men fight the Imperial Guard to decide the outcome. My suggestion? Don't. No! Was it Jean Grey or Madeline Pryor who became the host of the Phoenix Force? What does X-Men 97 suggest? There is some confusion regarding who actually embraced the Phoenix Force, Jean Grey or her clone Madeline Pryor. However, strictly going by the 90s animated series, there is no reason to suspect any involvement of Madeline Pryor. It was the original Jean Grey who attracted the cosmic entity, and the whole replacement by a clone happens much later on. However, if you consider X-Men 97 to be a continuity of the original series, then there there is a chance that Mr. Sinister replaced Jean Grey with her clone much earlier than we think. In that case, the whole Phoenix Saga narrative could have been centered around Madeline Pryor, who simply had no clue about her own identity and believed that she was the original Jean Grey. X-Men 97 explores the same kind of identity crisis that we have seen previously during the events of the Dark Phoenix, when the Force starts corrupting Jean Grey and the X-Men tried her best to regain control over her. Only in this reboot animated series, the corruption and manipulation is orchestrated by Mr. Sinister, who triggers Madeline Pryor's transformation into the darker version of herself, the Goblin Queen. She has the memories of the original Jean Grey implanted in her so that her belief in her fake identity would be strong. We even see her referencing to the Phoenix episode, although there is a good chance that she wasn't even there back then. Although the newer narrative does make it slightly possible that the replacement may have happened earlier, chances are much greater than it was the original Jean Grey who endured the whole Phoenix saga. Overall, it was a fun throwback to these iconic episodes from the original series and X-Men 97 has successfully delved into the dynamic and compelling story arcs featuring Jean Grey and her tragic clone, Madeline Pryor. Do let us know in the comments below about your thoughts on the whole Phoenix Saga event and also tell us whether you think that the X-Men 97 did justice to the narrative while referencing it in the episodes. As always, if you like the content, don't forget to leave a like and subscribe to us if you haven't already. Have a good one and be safe. Thanks everyone.